Hello, the game is Temtem. In this video, the topic will be making money in Temtem, the various ways to do it, and the uh, most efficient and best ways to do it. Um, in the game, the money is called Pansun, so if I'm referring to money or currency, I'm referring to Pansun. And real quick before we begin, I'd just like to let you know that I've completed a 14 video series of all the available rare Temtem in the game, so you can Look up whichever one you're interested in. The videos are only one, two minutes each. So very quick, very uh, to the point. Um, please like, give us a subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content on my channel. Okay, so let's begin. So the three best ways that I've found to make money in Temtem is either by trading, breeding, or freeing them. And I'll go into each in detail throughout this video. Uh, please check the description for links to specific time frames that you might be interested in. Uh, this video may get a little lengthy as I'm going to go into in-depth discussion for each trading, breeding, and freeing, capturing, and releasing Temtem. For each way to make money, I'm giving it a ranking uh, for how much money you can make, how fast you can make that money, and how much effort is required to make that money. Um, so what I found real quick is that the grinding, the trading, and the breeding are all kind of a cycle. Um, to do one, you almost have to do a little bit of the other. Um, they kind of lend into each other a little bit. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're a grinder. You don't care about trading on Discord or breeding at all. It's too complex. You just want to grind out some mobs and make money. Well, when you're doing that, you're going to get some 50 SVs that are worth money. So you won't want to release them or you'll just be losing money. You're going to want to sell them, right? So you'll go on Discord, you'll sell them real quick, pretty cheap, and you'll make some money off of it. Or maybe you don't like selling on Discord, maybe you'll save them so you can breed a Temtem for yourself. Well, if you're just breeding one Temtem, that's a horrible way to do it. You're going to lose out on a lot of money. And that's what I think a lot of people's mindset are. They just want to they think about breeding one Temtem and not mass breeding Temtem to sell them. So, you know, if you're breeding Temtem correctly to make money, then you will have to do some trading to sell them. And probably even a little bit of grinding to get some 50s that you need. So let's go ahead and jump into trading. Uh, a lot of trading happens on Discord, the official Temtem Discord. Uh, there's a little bit that happens on the forums. You'll have to find your own method. Um, I prefer Discord. I think most of the trading happens in Discord. Discord's a very good chat program with search features that allow you to go in and look at people's posts and find what they're selling, what they're, what they're buying. Um, so if you look in the t Discord, they'll have a trading hub here with a willing to buy, willing to trade general. That's for just general, obviously it's for general uh, Temtem sales. Mostly people are selling your single uh, 50 SV stat Temtems in there. You have a Luma, that's where people are selling their Lumas that they find. Now take notice, one guy here willing to buy any Luma for 20 to 30k. Pretty good chance he's a trader. He's just trying to buy uh, whatever he can as low as possible to build his inventory and then he'll sell them. And then you have the willing to sell perfect SVs. Um, this is when you have breeders who are breeding these um, Temtem with all perfect starting values of 50. Um, and then they sell them in here. So if that's what you're looking to buy, come in here. If you're trying to sell it, come in here and post. As you can see, they ran them. They, they they range in price. Uh, so for a perfect Kinyu, um, with the protector, which is good for PVP, he wants 30k. Which from what I've seen, that's actually not bad. Most were charging 35 to 40k. Um, the benefactor there for 25k, that's a decent price. I bought one myself for 30k, so that's 5k cheaper than what I bought my perfect Kinyu for. Then of course you got the willing to sell items, willing to sell other. But I just wanted to kind of give you an example here of like the spreadsheets and collections that people put together. So this one guy's post showed all of his single value 50 Temtem that he was selling. And I just want to give you an idea. You know, you see that he's selling them for 350 to 450 each. For the rare ones, he's selling them for 900 each. Uh, so as people are grinding, they're collecting these 50s. They come out here and they sell them for anywhere. I've seen them anywhere for 100 each to... Like for rare ones, nine, 900 to 1,500. So I'm not an expert on the market. I'm not a trader myself. I do like looking at it because I do like in-game economies. I think it's interesting. But I just kind of wanted to show you examples of what uh, what people are doing out there. And I just wanted to show you an example of what trading is. So here he's offering a trade. 
I accept the trade, go into the trading interface that gives you a warning saying all trades are final and they're not going to deal with your drama if you don't like the trades, so be careful what you're doing. <laughs> That's my interpretation of it. Um, I do wish they had a way for you to enter the money in instead of sitting here raising it up like this because you know when you're dealing with 20 30 40 50 thousand pants on trades um, you know this can get a little bit annoying but it went pretty quick so I get the money in there and then you'll see I want to just quickly before I hit accept uh, just check I want to make sure it has the egg move that I wanted it has the trait that I wanted all the stats are 50 everything's good nothing's weird about it and then hit OK and there you go that's the general overview of trading. I could do a three hour long video of trading in in-game economies, but this is a broad overview with a little bit of in-depth into each topic. Okay, so on to breeding. Now I put how much, I put three positives here. How fast, one positive, and how much effort, uh, one negative. Um, how much you can make a lot of money breeding, believe it or not. A lot of people say breeding's a sink. Um, there's a reason why people are breeding and selling perfects like crazy. There's a lot of money to be made if you know what you're doing. Uh, how fast? I would have put three, but there is a little bit of uh, trading involved to get the 50 SVs that you need. There is a little bit of waiting period uh, while you're breeding them. Um, how much effort? I would put three pluses if not for the fact that breeding to initially learn it is very complex and very hard to wrap your head around um, and there's a lot of in intricacies to it um, if you get males instead of females when you need females it can jam your whole process up and you got to start a whole new batch and you got to really think about and plan out how you're going to uh, balance everything to optimize your breeding it, it can get pretty in-depth so the effort I put one down because it's so in-depth and detailed um, otherwise it's very easy it takes a few hours and you can make hundreds of thousands of pants on I'm sure by now if you've even looked into any bit of breeding you've seen this perfect SV breeding guide uh, it shows the first level this is just the first level of breeding just one but there's uh, four levels under this that can join in with this and it's very hard to describe without making a diagram myself so breeding is difficult to show and explain uh, without going into like it would seriously take a, like an hour long if not a three hour long video to describe all the intricacies of breeding and show you the different outcomes um, for now I'm just gonna have to suffice with um, just some of my notes so let me explain to you what you're seeing here. So, so starting at the bottom where you see first, second, third, and you see all the zero Fs, these are just my notes and my indicators so I can understand it. But what that means is the first round of breeding, zero F means a Temtem that has zero breeds left, and F means it's a full stat, meaning all 50s. So that's a sellable resource. You could sell that for 20, 30K, depending on what type of Temtem it was. So on your first round of breeding, when you take two temtems and start the process of the chart so how this chart works is one side you're breeding down into a half perfect and the other side you're breeding down into another half perfect and then you blend them together each side costs 30,000 in materials not including the temtem themselves so the whole breeding process costs 60,000 pence on what this chart does not show is how to mass breed it only shows you how to breed one and that's where a lot of misconception comes from so what first means is the first whole breeding process. If you maximize that down and breed all your Temtem possible out to zero breeds left and try to maximize and get as many fools as you can, unless my math is off and my method is incorrect and there's a better method, um, it'll cost you 125k and you'll get seven Temtem. And then you can do it again and you actually need to do it again to maximize it. So you got to do a whole second, another second breeding process and then that costs you another 125k and then you'll end up with 16 zeroed out full stat perfect temtems and you'll have one temtem with additional breeding in it left over you can use that later or you could sell it so just to reiterate first second third these are two full rounds of breeding and zeroing them out so not just breeding one but zeroing the breed capability down to zero so you maximize you squeeze every bit of temtem 
that you can out of it. So that'll cost you 250,000 uh, initial investment. And that does include the cost of buying the Temtems, not farming them yourself. Out of 250,000 uh, Pansun, you'll get 16 sellable perfects. Uh, if you divide 16 into 250,000, the cost for each to make is uh, 15.62 thousand. So let's just say 16,000 uh, for each Temtem is their cost. As for selling them, um, if you sold them for 25k each, you would make 150,000 Pansun profit. That's your return on investment. If you sold them for 30k each, you're making 230,000 profit. Uh, if you sold them for 35k each, you will make 310k profit. Time it takes to do all this, um, three, four hours. It really doesn't take long to breed. Um, this is not including at the time it takes for the trading or acquiring or grinding the single value 50s that you'll need. And all this is considering a perfect breeding session where you don't have any mishaps where you get a male when you need a female but once you are over that initial hump and you have you know 500 600 thousand pants on to invest in the breeding it's it's easy and once you know what you're doing and you got it all planned out and you can work out the kinks like when you get a male when you need a female you can just do another breeding cycle to get around that it's not a big deal you got plenty of stock for breeding um, it's, it's very quick. It's very easy to just turn a profit. I think the, the breeding process isn't the hard part at that point. It's then you're leaning more into the trading aspect because you're, you got to post your sales and you got to answer your PMs of, of potential buyers and people trying to haggle you down. You got to know what your haggle points are, what your walk away point is. So to me, breeding is the very end game economy. Uh, breeding perfects, breeding lumas, that's all end game. Trading is the intermediary between breeding and grinding. Grinding is where you're generating your initial startup, you're generating your uh, 50 SVs for breeding. Okay, so now that we've looked at charts and diagrams and you feel like you're back at work in a meeting at the office, um, let's get into grinding. So this was originally what this video was going to be about. Uh, the two best grinding spots to make money but I, I why stop there when there's so much potential for breeding and trading so please forgive a lot of that um, there's not a lot of video you can watch of how to trade there's not a lot of video you can watch of how to breed um, so let's get on to grinding free temtem so I gave that a lot of negatives here so you don't make a lot of money doing it it's very slow and it's high effort because you need to just constantly pay attention to what you're doing. I mean, you can watch Netflix um, while you're doing it, but uh, depending on what camp, actually, some camps are a little, little more complex. So I'm going to review the two best camps that I know about in the game that are pretty popular. So when you're grinding, you're using your Tem cards, capture uh, Temtem, and then you go to this free Temtem coordinator. And then based on the value of the Temtem and how many of them you call it, they give you a nice little package. You got to do 250 of them for your weekly reward anyway. So you might as well get paid the most you can possibly get paid while you're doing it. The first camp we'll go over we'll call the Water Camp. Some people may refer to it as the Shuni Camp or the Umishi Camp as they're the two types of mobs that spawn there. I'm going to refer it as the Water Camp and the second camp as the Fire Camp. Also in the water camp, you have the whip lump that spawn there. So these are the three types of mobs that you'll be farming is Shuni, which is a rare, Umishi, and whip lump. So the first camp is in Takuma subsurface. It's the Shuin camp, a lot of people refer it to. Um, so you want to come in and go down to where you find the idol and you want to farm in the water area on either side of the island works fine. So you'll need to put together a group that works well. Um, I like Nestle and Kinu because uh, it work, they synergize very well. Kinu heals, Nestle heals, and does multi-target damage to water. Um, so if you see here, my, my Nestle will chain lightning. It's just hitting the one, which is fine. But you see right here, he heals because Kinu's benefactor heals him for 10%, I think, of his life every time he gets hit. That helps. Um, and then, you know, with Nestle using this chain lightning and healing himself, 
basically, you can stay up forever with this combo, which is what I like. And Kino also with support, that you can sleep and do a little bit of damage if needed. Um, so they work really well together in a water environment such as this. One of the problems I did have with my Nestle was he was too powerful and um, I was overkilling and that's a that's a huge waste of time that'll that'll drop your uh, pan sun per hour down immensely if you're getting into battles and then killing instead of capturing um, so what I actually had to do is go and swap out my and he was 48 at the time when I swapped him out he's 48 46 in this video but I had to swap him out for like a level 38 one that had worse stats and then I I was doing less damage with my chain lightning and not overkilling them. Uh, even the wind, wind lumps that appear here that you do 4x electrical damage on, uh, most of them I wouldn't kill when I went and got my weaker Nestle. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you don't have to use this particular team combo. This is what I use. There's other combos that work well here. Uh, find one that works for you that allows you to capture them as quickly as possible. You want to have them captured in two to three rounds. That's your goal. The faster you capture, the more pan sun per hour you're generating. And I'll go over to pan sun per hour and what I've found between the difference between the two camps after I review the fire camps. Let's do that now. So in this camp, you just kind of run around in this little square patch here. The other square patches spawn different temtems. You kind of want this one. Um, so the trick to this is just having some wind lumps, uh, or whip lump, I'm sorry. I keep calling them wind lumps, or whip lumps. And you want to use cold breeze. So you'll cold breeze uh, one target with both whip lumps, and that'll freeze them for three turns. So first round, freeze one target. Second round, freeze the second target, and then use your temp cards to capture them. Since they have status effects on them, and for whatever reason, these temtems are super easy to catch, even without status effects, you don't need to lower their hit points down, which makes it so much easier than other camps and other methods. I definitely rate this camp as the most brain dead, like if you want to just Netflix and chill type camp. Whereas the water camp is more intense, you have to pay attention, you can overkill very easily, um, they can kill you, they resist the temp cards. I did try taking this whip lump combo over to the water and see how that worked. Did not fare well. They were dead within, I think, two or three rounds. Um, they were, you know, since the Temtems there can resist the cards, the, this method is not as reliable. The thing that makes this reliable is the fact that you can capture them in one or two cards. It's not a big deal. Um, there's also, in this camp, a recharge station very close by. Um, which makes it uh, very easy to just run up, get more tem cards, recharge your tem tem, and then run right back down in five seconds. You're you're back in it again. As far as equipment uh, for this wimp lump group, you will just need the four leaf clover. The other piece of equipment doesn't really matter. I believe there's one that reduces burn damage, which would probably be good to just throw it out on the other one. Uh, for the water camp, you will definitely need Lure on Nestle, so he takes all the hits. And then you will want the Four Leaf Clover on what other, what other Temtem you decide to use with Nestle. I spent all day at these two camps grinding, recording how much I made, how many cards I used, how long it took me each fight. And let me go over that with you after I show you how to get here. So Mastion and Magmus will be the only two Temtems that spawn in this little patch. Let me show you how to get here. So you want to start at the entrance, come down, go through the water, down around, and you do need the grappling hook, the rock grappling hook, and this is the patch right here that you want to be at. So what are the differences in the camps? Which one's better? That's a big debate. Some people say water camp because you make more money. Some people say no, fire camp, you make more money. Um, so if you look here, you can see in the water camp, the shoe knees are rare. So about 5% of the time, you're going to get a big, big guy there. Uh, he's worth a lot. And you also get the opportunity to get a 50 of him, which is valuable. And you can use that to breed a perfect shoe knee. So the chance for a rare is something that you should consider and has some value to it. At the water camp, you also have the whip lumps, which are very common, very easy to kill and have a high value. Uh, you do have to be careful using electricity with them. They do 4x damage, so you can kill them, and then that reduces your value for that uh, encounter. 
the Umishi are pretty valuable compared to what's at the fire camp. So the water camp overall has a higher value, but you have to factor in the, that, that it's more difficult. Then uh, it's it's easier to overkill. It's easier to get killed. Um, sometimes they take a lot of cards. So every time you throw a card, it's 15 uh, pants on off of the price of what they go for. So you have to factor everything in. How much time you're spending. How many cards you're throwing. You know, how difficult are the mobs? How many times you got to run back and forth to get cards? All this is factored in. And this is why there's a big debate. Which is better? Water camp? Nobody really knew. So... I took the time to kind of go over it and look at it at a per Temtem battle basis to try to get a good calculation and a good feel of which camp is better. So I don't want to spend too much time on the numbers, but I basically wanted to go over with what I was doing so you have a little bit of an understanding of what I'm talking about here. So I recorded the exact time in seconds that each battle took, starting from when I started walking back and forth. So I wanted to include the randomness of walking back and forth which usually takes in between 2 seconds and 15 seconds to get into battle. Uh, I think on average it was more like 5 or 6 seconds. And then I recorded for each type of mob, uh, how many cards I threw, how many... I'm sorry, I keep saying mobs from other games. How many Temtem. So how many cards you threw per Temtem. How many uh, Temtem appeared in each encounter. And then I was able... To with that information, you're able to formulate how much you made based off of what the Temtem value was, how many cards you used, so you subtract that, how many cards you used, the value of that, was it 15, was it 30, and then um, then using your time, you can get a pan sun per minute value of what you're earning. And now that you have uh, a value and a time with the battles, you can get a true calculation of what... Um, what you are earning because what I when I originally tried it and when I was talking to people in the discord they kept saying well I get you know 7,000 every run well what's a run I did a run and it took me five hours and you know my wife and my kid were pulling me away I was going AFK a lot it took me five hours to get rid of 99 cards so what what exactly is a run so I figured with this method I can figure out exactly if I was just doing it perfect efficiency um, about how much am I going to be making at each camp and I'll go ahead and give you the results of that save you from having to do all this yourself so my average panton per minute for the water camp was 117 let's call it 118 round it up um, which makes the panton per hour at 7067 and this is include these figures do include the cost of the cards they do not include the time it takes to run back and forth, of course. I'm only including time for battle. To find the battle, to do the battle, reset. I'm not including anything else. So for water camp, average PPM, 118. The PPH, 7,067 per hour. Uh, for the fire camp, the average uh, PPM is 120.08. So surprisingly, it was higher. And I think that is because even though the Magmus is such low value, uh, the fact that is the battles just go so fast and so easy. Um, you can burn through a stack of 99 uh, Tem cards in no time here. Um, so that uh, PPM of 120 brings the uh, Panton per hour to 7,204. Um, so this is uh, better than the Water Camp. But you got to keep in mind some other things. So in the water camp, you do have a chance to obtain a rare, right? So you can you can obtain the Shui rare. You might get perfect 50s if you stay there long enough. And then you can breed that, and that's high value. Um, was my team optimal? Am I a good player? I'm an okay player. But if, if some pro guy who, who can make a better team or knows better what to do here i think the water camp has more potential for somebody that can maybe put together a better team or can play better than i did so i think the water camp has the highest potential i think if you could because i was killing a lot and and it was taking time and i was missing my cards in the water camp so i think if you could optimize that the water camp could shoot up to nine ten thousand pph 
Um, who knows how high it could go, but I think that's the highest earning camp dependent on how good you are. Now, the benefits to the fire camp is it's easy, it's relaxed, it's Netflix and chill time. I'm going to watch some YouTube videos. That's what I was doing half the time I was there. That's one of the benefits here, but you're not going to be able to push the PPH. You're not going to be able to earn more per hour, much more than I did. Um, I was pretty at max. I was, you know, every card catches. You just do the same thing. You freeze them, freeze them, catch them, catch them, next battle. So... There's not much more efficiency you can do at this camp, whereas the water camp, maybe if you're a little more efficient, you can push that number up a little higher. Um, the other benefit about the fire camp, however, is there's, there is zero downtime. So your little wimp lumps don't take much damage at all. You can, I almost got through a whole stack without having to heal them. And uh, you can just use your, uh, um, your, I forget what the thing is called, but the little thing that heals them, you can just use that no problem or have some backups. Um, and also to get more cards, you just run literally like five or ten seconds away, heal up your temtem, recharge your uh, thing, and then grab some more cards and run back. In in 15, 20 seconds, you're back in you're back in the fight. Whereas you have to run out and travel, and it might take you know 10 or 20 minutes to get to island two, get some cards, um, all that crazy stuff. So. There's benefits to both. So the end result and how I evaluate this, both are good camps. Both are good options. Do you want to be more engaged with the water camp? Do you want to kind of just be brain dead and watch a YouTube video with the fire camp? Your choice. Do you want to try to push the boundaries of what you can grind at the water camp? Or are you okay with making, you know, six, seven, eight uh, PPH? So I hope that was helpful to you. Um, I hope I did a lot of work recording this. A lot of stopwatch, stopwatch, stopwatch on the battles. Hundreds of battles I did to get these numbers. Uh, and again, these are my numbers. And they, they work off of my efficiency. So are you a little more efficient than I am? Or are you a little less efficient than I, than I am? All that's going to matter. So thank you for watching my video. Uh, please give it a like if you enjoyed any part of this. Uh, hook up a subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Check out some of my other content. I'll leave uh, some links in the description to my 14 Rares playlist series. Um, some of the background music you heard in this video was provided by Toxic Eternity. Check out his uh, YouTube page. He does a lot of uh, gaming metal, which is awesome. It sounds so great. Uh, I'll put a link to his YouTube in the description as well. Thank you very much. Um, thank you all for watching the video, and see you in the next one.